This is the second and final part of my attempt to create a sort of tableau of a steam driven nodding donkey pumping engine. I absolutely loathe painting my models. But in a rare rash of I don't know what enthusiasm I decided to put a bit of paint on the part completed nodding donkey. Having done that, having put some paint on it for the first time I decided to have a bit of a trial of rotating things and it doesn't work. It isn't so much that I can't paint and in my youth as you can see I did dabble a bit in a very amateur sort of way in doing the odd picture. My inclination however to paint my models has vanished if indeed it ever existed. What is wrong is that the vertical movement of the uh, sort of pump end of the uh, beam is far too great with the result that there's interference between this nut and that no big deal really you could say but also what will be the locking arrangement for the two steel straps that's interfering with this part and the long and the short of it is, it seems to me that the throw of this crank is far too great now I don't think I've made any errors in making this beam I think that's, well, it has the drawing, that's for certain I'm not convinced I've actually made any error here either by following the drawing but it's clear to me that to correct this situation the distance here needs to be substantially reduced so that the up and down movement isn't so great which will translate to a reduced movement at this end. I've performed a rough and ready check on the model with the dimensions from here to here and here to here and also the dimension from here to here which controls the throw of the crank and those dimensions are correct as per the original drawing Therefore I conclude at this juncture that in fact the measurements on the drawing are wrong and the potential answer to my problem and by how much I don't know at this stage but is to reduce the throw of this arm probably by something of the order of half an inch. I'll have to sit down with a pen and paper and uh, work it out because obviously you're limited the pump ram travel is limited and in theory I suppose the pump ram travel uh, shouldn't exceed twice the throw of this eccentric mechanism or whatever you want to call it so I'll have to have a sit down and a think, but I must say, to discover all this after I've stuck some paint on it, and I hate painting, is really annoying me, let's be candid. In my view, I have decided that this part of the drawing is actually wrong. The drawing calls for the centres between these two points of 1 and 7 sixteenths of an inch. In my view, 
in order to get the uh, correct travel, it's a bit difficult to do it one handed on the beam of the rocking uh, on the rocking beam of this nodding donkey this dimension should not be 1 and 7 sixteenths but should in fact be an inch and 3 sixteenths which is to say a quarter of an inch shorter and what I've done therefore on these two crank arms is to drill a new tube A hole a quarter of an inch in from the previous one and using those amended dimensions seems to me that things will now go round so there we have it I cannot understand how such an error could go undetected I've removed the counterbalance weights at the moment and the boiler is not properly fixed down it's just uh, clamped in position to see what happens and I've put a flame under the boiler with a little bit of uh, mess in it and a little bit of water in the boiler just to see if we get any signs of life in this nodding donkey I'm very uncertain as to whether this drive belt arrangement is going to be satisfactory, it's a bit of a lash up I will see oh, I'm sort of impressed Needs a bit of fine tuning but This Wilson oscillating engine is as old as I am. It was made in 1947, same year as me. Classic oscillator, because I don't know how to make a mess. But it's a very well made piece of kit. The oscillating engine is not very powerful really, it's only about a quarter of an inch bore, so the fact that it does go round must say something. A little bit of binding in the motion somewhere, I'll have to chase that. At that point just there somewhere. Although, I suppose it's the point at which they've got the uh, those counterweights work against you, but anyway. What I'm attempting to do for this nodding donkey engine is to get rid of my cobbled up rather naff looking uh, 
sort of elasticated spring steel drive band, the sort of thing that you get on a Mamod, which I never think looks very good. I have a roll of sort of 400 grit sandpaper and I've cut a length of that off and then trimmed trimmed one side down to about um, if I remember rightly 5 sixteenths wide I think it's 5 sixteenths um, might have been 3 who knows anyway and had a, um, a tester by gluing the ends together this is just a scrap piece with super glue to see if it will hold together and it does and you can't pull it apart so I've glued together a length of the uh, 400 grit and I'm using the grit side down at this stage I know clearly you could turn it over if you wanted to so I've glued the length together and then the plan is to make a pulley of such a diameter to put the correct tension on this belt because I don't really want to have a um, some sort of uh, tensioning arrangement and it ain't going to get a lot of running so once I've done it I've done it so the next step is to make a little pulley just a couple of anecdotes on this uh, Nodding Donkey pumping engine which is almost completed I'll get to that the first of the anecdotes is that this uh, proposed prime meal mover which is a Wilson vertical steam engine is actually it's very good but it's actually as old as I am it was made and I've covered it in a previous video this thing was made in about 1947 which is the year early part of that I ended this planet The second anecdote which I will refer to concerning the tableau on which I'm fixing this uh, nodding donkey engine concerns this piece of wood. I've just stained it to make it look a bit more presentable but it is actually a piece, a very chunky piece of proper English oak. It came, uh, I was a civil engineer in an earlier life, and it came out of a pumping station demolition. Um, and the pumping station itself, the waterworks, was built in 19, well, it was finished in 1906. So in, so in my judgment, this piece of wood, which came from a door frame, can you believe, um, came from a tree that was probably chopped down in, a, in the late 1800s, that would be my guess. And as I say, I have reduced it in section a little bit because it was bigger than this. Um, but I haven't measured it, but it's about four by three. And this was from a door frame, can you believe? Which just goes to show, in my view, how the Victorians did things. And it wasn't any particular special door, it was just a door into uh, an annex room on the pumping station. Just in case anyone was wondering how I managed to drill a 5 inch long by 8 diameter hole through the middle of this uh, quarter inch diameter bar, the answer is my extended homemade eighth drill. Simply turn the shank of the drill down, lock tied it into the end of a bit of eighth uh, ordinary steel, wait for it to set and you can make these things to any length you like. I've made a few of them over the years for different jobs, don't use them very often. Uh, this one will actually drill five and a half inches, just go steady. Make sure you retract the drill a lot 
because there are no clearance uh, flutes up this end so you have to keep retracting don't let this thing pack up or you will be sorry so that's it This is the final version with my flat drive belt. Need a bit more steam by the look of it. The little Wilkinson engine can only just about keep up with what it's being asked to do, but I think for a display model it's fine. And the speed of rotation is, I think, spot on really, with the beam and the pump. So I'm happy. Considering the engine is 76 or 77 years old, if I can run that fast, it'd be a miracle, wouldn't it? I think the boiler holds very little water. I'm quite chuffed, really. I'm chuffed with me belt and all. Well, it has a good guess that we're getting low on water. I did debate filling the, uh, we call it header tank, with oil and getting the thing to pump some light oil around. But in the end, I chickened out. Didn't want to run it on water like so many people do. And I actually chickened out from putting oil in it. Couldn't quite work out how I'd ever get it cleaned up actually from inside. Didn't want it gummed up. So I ran it dry. The pump that is. <laughs>